Everyone, this week we're going to read a double Torah portion, Matos and Masai. We're also going to complete the fourth book of the Torah, the book of Bamidbar. And the opening subject of this week's double Torah portion is the subject of words. You know, we have an expression in our society that says, words are cheap. But the, this week's Torah portion tells us that perhaps the most valuable thing we have is our words. You know, it's interesting that in the Diamond District, Apparently, they have a, a, a method of doing business that when they do a deal, they say mazel and bracha, and they shake hands, and it's a binding contract. And that's the way it should be. Your words should be binding. And that's what the opening of this week's Torah portion says, that when you speak words, lo yachel devaro, you should not profane your words by not fulfilling your words. You may have heard people say the words beli neder. They say, I'm going to do something without a vow. Because you're stipulating, in case I'm not able to fulfill it, it shouldn't be a violation of a vow. As a matter of fact, the holiest prayer of the year, Kol Nidre, is all about our words. The words that we didn't fulfill, the words we didn't keep. So our words are very valuable. Now the opening parasha says, Hashem said to Vaidaber Moshe, Moshe spoke these words to the heads of the tribes, which is fascinating. Usually it says Moshe speaks it to the Jewish people. Here he speaks it to the heads of the tribes. Why? Because unfortunately, who's prone to lie the most? The leaders, the politicians. They make promises during the campaigns and then they don't keep it. So the opening verse says, speak to the leaders because the leaders are the first ones who have to keep their words. They have to set an example for everyone else what it means that your word is your, your, your bond. Your, your word is your bond. They say that Socrates said that before a person speaks, they should use a triple filter test. What's the triple filter test? The first thing is you should ask yourself, are the words I'm going to say true or false? If it passes that test and it's true, then the second question is, is it positive or negative? And then even after it's true and it's positive, there's a still a triple test. The third test is, are your words useful? Is there some benefit to what you're going to say? And only if it's true, if it's positive, and if it's beneficial and useful, only then should you speak those words. And I think the Torah would agree with that. Our words are very important. I, I mentioned this recently that someone said, imagine someone gave you a credit card with unlimited funds and you never have to pay a bill. So obviously you would shop for whatever you need with the credit card, but then it's unlimited. What do you do after you've shopped for everything you need? So you would go to the store and stand online, line and anyone who wants to buy something, you say, let me, do, let me take care of that for you because you have this unlimited credit card. And someone said, we do have an unlimited credit card. That's our words. God gave us unlimited words, and we could choose to use them as, as, as freely as we want. And therefore, we should use our words as positively as we can to speak words of truth, to speak words of positivity, of kindness, and words that are beneficial and practical and helpful for other people because we have the unlimited ability to do so. I conclude with a story about this kid who uh, used to use his words uh, in, in a negative way and hurt people and insult people. And the one day his mother said, this is what I want you to do. Next time you say something hurtful to someone, you use your words negatively, I want you to take this hammer and nails and go out into the backyard and bang a nail into the fence. For every time you speak harshly to someone, you hurt someone's feelings with your words, go knock a nail on the fence. The kid listens to his mother. He, at the end of the day, his mother said, how many nails did you knock into the fence? He said, eight nails because I, I offended eight people with my words today. Next day, she says, how many nails today? She says, today only six. Next day, only three, only two, only one. Finally, he comes to his mother and says, today I used all my words properly. I didn't say anything hurtful to anyone. I didn't have to knock any nails in the fence. So the mother said, okay, now I want you to go and take all the nails out of the fence. So he went and took out all the nails and his mother took him to the backyard and said, look, what do you see? You see all the holes? He said, even if you say you're sorry, even if you learn your lesson and you regret what you said, and you pull the nail out, you still leave a hole there, you still leave a scar. Our words are the most powerful things we have. The positive words leave a, a positive impact and impression and so on that a person could carry their whole life. I speak to sometimes people who are 40, 50, 60 years old. Sometimes they're still suffering from the words that their parents or their teachers said to them that was hurtful when they were in second grade. And sometimes you speak to people and they have beautiful childhoods and the loving words of their parents still ring in their ears 20, 30, 40, 50 years later. We this week's Pasha tells us the most important thing is how we use our words. 
That's our most valuable asset that we have. And unlike our society, it says words are cheap. You could use them, it doesn't matter. We know that words are very precious.